uh, yesterday we did something, so let me just do a recap very quickly and then go straight to the, the layout and then talk about the kit and then talk about the Arduino shape. So that is where we are. We are. So straight to the, to the Arduino itself, of course, we say that Arduino is a physical program with the circuit board, which is called a microcontroller. And then Arduino is not complete without the software, and that's where uh, we are looking at the software, and the software is the, a platform that we use uh, for coding. Generally, this is a platform that we use for us to be able to write our codes, and these codes are the ones we are able to upload to the board so that we are able to accomplish maybe some of the tasks that we plan to accomplish with them. Great, so I'm taking you back to, to a bit of the layout of yesterday. I mentioned that there are probably Arduinos of different kinds, and I think I remember talking about the pins, and we talked about the pins being on both sides. But I wish to remember, I want you to have a look at the power point, power pin. In the power pins, we have those different pins, this ground, two ground, uh, written G and D. Remember the output of each pin, so if you are to connect any component to this pin, you must make sure that that component can be able to sustain the power output of five volts. If it is on this pin, then that component should be able to uh, sustain that power or else the, the component will burn or rather will be spoiled. So we don't want situations where uh, electricity uh, burns this. Remember, this is about electricity and you have to be very careful and that's why it's very important that you take note of what is the output. But generally, all the other pins, like the digital pins, we, we are aware that most of them, the, the output is always 5 volts. So this is majorly the general one. Apart from this particular vo uh, pin that produces 3.3 .3 volts, the rest are basically 5 volts. Um, all of them, they are able to bring out 5 volts. Then, of course, we have another reset here. Um, then I think I wanted to talk about this pin here. This pin um, here, it is for voltage in. It is voltage, so you can always see it is voltage in. Uh, I hope I'm going to write this well with the mouse. Voltage in. So, I mean, voltage is getting in. So this one, uh, probably you have a project where you want to use power from a source like solar and you want to package the whole of this uh, this thing and put it probably your project, you package it together as uh, maybe some sort of in a plastic package and you want it to be in the field using solar and you want now the power input. Remember, we have said power should be getting in through the power in uh, button here, the power in space here. But in the case you don't have this, is basically the power which is being plugged from either a battery source or a wall and stuff like that, but in case you don't have this, please kindly ensure you just put voltage in uh, via the, the voltage in. And this one can be very, very uh, useful when you want to come up with a project that probably is using solar as your, um, as your base for, for working. So, um, Think about that as, as, as particular parts, probably if there's an echo. Somebody says there's an echo. Thank you so much for giving me feedback. I'm expecting your feedback through the Q&A session and probably also ensure you write in that section, ensure you're also indicating some questions that will be answered uh, shortly. I want you also to look at uh, probably which other pin. These analog pins, these ones, of course, are for analog either input and uh, and remember you are fixing the analog uh, gadgets here and some of the analog gadgets will be will be looking at them shortly uh, from from now uh, as 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 we continue today of course um then i want you to look at this particular this is um this is like the brain remember yesterday we were talking about uh this kind of uh this this kind of the microchip is a chip controlling this other uh, type of uh, the, the board and they are both the same you can see they are all the same the only difference is on the on, on the on, on that particular controller and let me just 
probably change the color to red so that you're able to see. So I'm saying this other controller here, if you can look at it, this controller here, microcontroller, uh, it's not uh, the same as this other one uh, that we are being, we are, we are looking at, but they are both doing the same work. The difference is that in this other, the, the blue one here, this one is removable. You can remove it and put another one, but this one is uh, basically uh, put on the board and you may not be able to remove it. So you'll find this variation of boards and they are all definitely, they are all uh, Arduino boards. They are all Arduino boards and they can do similar work. Uh, it's written, you see program with Arduino. So it's basically an Arduino board. The manufacturer may be different. Uh, don't worry about manufacturers, but all of them, uh, they do similar work uh, because you can see the number of pins are just similar and uh, also the way it is. Um, the role and the functions are, are equally the same and you can even see i was talking about voltage in uh, pin i'm oh, sorry it's here and the voltage in pin so that you're able to put in the pins uh, to connect with external source of power and especially here we are looking at the solar power in case you have a solar project i think this is what we went through yesterday and it's not bad to come again and look at it again and again it is important that you understand the, the board because if you don't understand the board, tomorrow you may not be able to do a project and you may not be able to explain to somebody why the board and why are you using Arduino and what is all this about Arduino. Somebody may ask you, what is the role of this? Why are we having different probably components here and there? Great. So I think maybe it is good today that we have a look at uh, the other thing and then of course we want to go ahead and plug uh, what about if we plug our board in the, in the probably um, I don't know whether we are still getting echo uh, Napua is saying we are getting echo I don't know whether the echo is still on is there anybody who uh, is getting echo and has joined or maybe it is done I think maybe that was uh, that was a message that a while ago there was some, some echo. We have rectified it. Thank you so much. So we need to go ahead and plug in our board to our computer. But before we do that, I think there, there's quite a number of things that I want us to, to, to look at and, 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 and read about how, what else is there to be used. Because it's not just a matter of taking the board and plugging it to the computer and now you start programming. But we are, we'll be asking ourselves, what are we programming? What is this that we want to work on? So this is uh, always the thinking that whenever you get the board, now it's straight away you go plug it into the computer. But I think it is good to look at uh, the whole kit. What else are available? When you go to the market, in most cases, you'll find yourself uh, buying a kit. We don't recommend that you buy only the board itself. At, at this particular level, because you are being a beginner, you will you will want to you'll be interested that you want to get a starter kit. And in most cases, this one comes with very basic kind of components that can allow you and help you come up with basic programs or basic projects. But some of those projects are not even basic; they are equally good and they can really work very well. Um, in the kit, they come in different sizes. They can come as a plastic, they can come probably uh, in boxes, in, in, in kind of packages, but all in all, they, they contain, uh, of course, just almost the same kind of, uh, kind of components that we, we are going to look at them uh, through and through. There is there's a link here, which I'm, I'm just putting, if you go to Arduino CC, uh, at the homepage, you're able to see what are some of the components that comes with, uh, with the kit what are these components that comes with the kit and some of them are written here there will be a push button maybe in your project you want to do something around a push button and uh, this is the front of course this is the uh, below how it looks like there's be a servo motor maybe you want to do something that only opens the doors and closes the door so you need some some sort of a motor or some sort of a, a moving uh, part like that of servo then there's potentiometer. Potentiometer, of course, is for adding or increasing 
voltage or stuff like that. And this is, this is quite very analog because it's not about on and off. It's about increasing it in range. Maybe it's a range of one to two. So where is the volume? Like whenever you're adding volume uh, in, in, in your, in, for music, definitely it is a range. It's not loud and, and quiet. If it is on and off, then the music will not be as enjoyable. You must take it through a range. And the range here is done majorly. You'll find in most of those uh, spaces, or rather in the radio, you'll find the potentiometer is very, very key. It's the one that you, you take and twist as you increase uh, the volume. It's just merely a potentiometer. So most of these components are found. And then we have here the LED. We were talking about LED yesterday. Whatever light emitting diode, in, in, in brief, it's called LED. And we have different colors. We have the yellow, the red, the blue. It depends, and I'll be able to show you some of the colors we have with us here uh, today. And I, and I think maybe it's not bad to also add. And I don't know how the echo will be able to to be to be, to do uh, because I just don't know how this. I have some machine here that I think the echo is there. I think I'll just use it for quite a little and then um, we stop it. So um, probably if you can look at this side video uh, which we are now having closer look and you can see the different colors of the uh, of the very the, the very very okay let me just speak that quickly and then we can get back uh, right so so probably so yeah so you can see the some of the kits that we have here they have different colors and the colors are uh, this i guess leds and stuff like if at all, uh, maybe you're not able to see, this is colorless. And then of course, they are the red, and then you can see that is red. And then I want to give you the blue, green one. You can see that is green. There are different colors, and it all depends on what you want to do. All right. Let me put you back. Great. So. When we talk about uh, the kit, definitely it's very important to you learn about the kit in full. They are different, and I think maybe already in the schools we are having these kits. If they are not there, definitely they are going to be uh, bought uh, very soon. And you'll get different components inside. Today we wanted to go through some of the components. We'll not be able to, co to completely exhaust the components, but it's good that we learn something about the components. Um, very quickly. Great. Um, some of the components, I think I've already mentioned some of them. LED, light emitting diode, you'll see them like this. There'll be a photoresistor, especially when you want to do projects that senses. These are always called sensors. Majority you'll find sensors. And then we have uh, probably, let me begin with this other side before getting to the side of the sensors. The jumper wires will, will really be able to be very key, especially when you'll be uh, connecting uh, your project. You need wires and they are of different colors uh, that you may need, especially if you are, uh, if you are probably using uh, maybe colors, and then probably you would want again another blue color to go somewhere. So you will need different colors uh, of these jumper wires. Then we have the resistor. The resistor are always very important because the resistor will always prevent components from, from really burning uh, quickly. Because, for example, the LEDs, LEDs may not be able to take the 5 volts. Remember, we talked about the 5 volts, uh, the, the, that the output of the, the, the pins. The pins may be able to get you probably the output of... Um, five volts and five volts are just too much. They cannot work with these particular LEDs. So these LEDs may not take up to that level. So if you just connect them directly to these five volts, definitely they will just burn. So in order not to burn them, you'll need resistors. 
The resistors come in various sizes. There's 330 kilobyte, I mean ohms, and then we have uh, 10,000 or rather 10K. Uh, uh, I mean, 330 ohms and then 10K ohms. These are probably, uh, depending on your project, you'll want to decide how far you want to reduce the power so that you protect some of the components that you're using. We've talked about potentiometer because you see it's moving from one all the way to three. So it is a whole range. So maybe it's going, going, increasing, increasing, increasing until it's so loud. When you're adding, probably you're putting music loud. You'll need to move around that. Then we have the dyad. And then let me just take you briefly to the uh, photo uh, from the sensor side. We have photo resistor. I think this one particularly is best, best, basically a sensor that senses that there is light. So when you want to do something that's really uh, very sensitive to light, you use photoresistor. Maybe your project is focused on light sensitivity. So you think about photoresistor. Uh, maybe your project is about piezo. This, uh, this one is basically for getting uh, sound. Um, the buzzer, probably you, are, you want just the sound to come out. So you'll be able to use uh, this. Then we have the transistor, the temperature sensor. Um, probably your, yours is about the, the temperature. Then we have the motor, the DC motor. You want to make maybe some um, some circle or probably you want some movement in, 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 in probably you have a project that requires that uh, the car has to move from one place to the other. When the car moves, definitely you need the tires or the wheel to go around and to move. And in this particular case, definitely you'll want to have uh, a PC, I mean a DC motor, uh, motor, definitely. Push button, of course, turning on and off uh, components in your project in case your project requires that. We are still just going on uh, by exploring what we have. And uh, I'd, rather, I'd want to welcome more, and more of your questions as we move on. It is important you ask questions, that one, and give feedback also because it is important, we know that we are really uh, helping you understand these things. I want to talk about, again, another component, another another part of Arduino, which is very important, and it's called Arduino Shield. Remember, as we talked about Arduino last time, we said that all your projects um, may not be handled by Arduino as it is. And sometimes you need either to extend it or to get a different kind of Arduino, or to look how do you how do you really uh, ensure that you 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 maybe we can say you upgrade the capability of Arduino. You do that uh, with components which are called shields. So Arduino shield. Probably you want to do something with with for example uh, Wi-Fi you need a Wi-Fi component because Arduino does not come with a Wi-Fi uh, component. So if your project really needs a Wi-Fi connection and stuff like that, you will need to have, you, you have to, you must be, you must be able to extend the capability of the Arduino to be able to capture the need you are looking for. And that's why um, the shields are there. They come in various shapes and uh, these are just some of them. We'll continue looking at more. There's this we're calling PCB, uh, uh, shield. There is also the built shield, inserted shield. Of course, there are those shields that can be probably just inserted and we'll show you because, for example, if you look at this very keenly, um, um, I think here I wanted to talk about one, the, the, the kind of shield, how do we connect to the Arduino board? This is why I've, I've, I've put these three categories of shield. So there are those shields that they come. When they come, you'll find they have small holes. These small holes are the ones you use to connect them to Arduino because you will use this particular gadget. So you'll find that these extension uh, pins, you'll find them all of all in all the kits, you'll always find that. And you can cut them, they are very long. Uh, I think I'll show you in our kit, I've just seen them here. And you use them now to connect uh, that particular uh, shield or an extension is a way of extending the capability of your Arduino. 
Then there are those ones that are already built. Probably you'll find some Arduino boards will come when they already have this part. It, you'll find it has a jo uh, this a joystick sort of for driving if at all it's game, you're pushing it down or this way or this way or that way, you know, forward, backward, the way you push it uh, like this probably. So, and, and, and again to the south like that. So you'll find most of these built, they're already built in an, an Arduino board. So you can buy a board that already has the shield built in them. So ensure you look at that. Uh, look at them like that or you may not be able even to find how you can connect so it it, it, it is it is upon you to either ban or rather connect some of these uh, these links or the endpoints or the connections you try and try now get cables solder them here and then connect them back to the Arduino board so be able to use such a shield so remember shield we have talked about is just uh, they are just more uh, more components that are you can use in order to increase the power or the capability of your Arduino. Great, I think that is great. I have to, I'll be giving you two minutes uh, to keep asking questions, and uh, I want uh, yes, somebody is asking how does a resistor work. Continue asking questions. We'll be working on that very shortly. Then we have the other shield, the type of shield that are just inserted. Then they are, they are inserted. They, you, they come with some pins below. What you need to do is just insert them on the Arduino board to be able to extend the capability of the Arduino. And you can see here, down here, this is the Arduino. The Arduino board is just down here. And then this, this is a shield which has just been fixed. Yeah, you see, when you look keenly between here, you'll find they have just been inserted on top of the Arduino board. And you can see this Arduino board. This is the, the USB and this is the power uh, for the power and as we have always talked about it. And the other pins, these are analog pins you can see. The other pins are the other side. So you'll find this particular kind of uh, board has been inserted on top of Arduino board. Meaning probably you want to just to dedicate your project and you're aware of what your project is going to do then you buy the shield just to extend the capability of the board. I think maybe there are, I want to show you more shield. Uh, it can be a shield that wants you to use micro SD. Probably in your project you want the, to use a micro SD to uh, maybe it's about video or playing music. You want to come up with a project that is playing music automatically and therefore you will need an extension because on the on the, on the board, Arduino board, you will not find this space for you to insert the micro SD. As you can see, the space is somewhere here. I hope uh, you'll be able to see. That is where you'll be able to fix the, 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 the small SD. So this one is not coming with Arduino and you have to buy a shield uh, on that. Then we have MP3 trigger, definitely again still for the music. Maybe the MP3 is already put inside and probably can use it in memory. We have the LCD. This, this, this one you'll always see it come. It will come with uh, the LCD. We're calling about liquid crystal uh, display. So for you to be able to see, to read from whatever uh, you are writing, maybe you want it to display the temperature, you want it to display any word or welcome, home, uh, type your name and people are able to type. So you want them to have this screen. So this screen may not be very easy for you to connect it to Arduino because the screen itself has so many, so many uh, pins. And I'll, I'll be able to show you in, 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 in a live uh, one that it is, it has so many pins and it becomes sometimes very hectic to connect it to the Arduino board because with so many small, small uh, pins, below it is so hard even for me i find a lot of challenge trying to connect the screen to the board so we have this that's why we have now this other thing you can see the board that the screen is sitting on this board is a shield so you have now very few pins you see you only have very few pins here these are the pins that now you are going to use to fix 
So these are the ones you're going to fix on the board. So it's very easy. You now just go straight to the board and fix that, and your 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 screen will be working. And like when you want to connect the whole screen to the to the Arduino board. So it is the, the shields are very important. They help the work become easier and extend the capability of the Arduino. The other shields again, I'll just move through very quickly. And probably maybe let me just show you probably a work about how a shield can really help you. This is the Arduino. I think we've talked about the Arduino. This is the Arduino here. Probably there's a sensor in your project. You have an Arduino and there's a sensor. And then uh, no, no, sorry. This is this is not the Arduino. This is the Wi-Fi shield because we have the Ethernet uh, for you to put the the internet cable here. This is the Ethernet uh, Ethernet uh, port. So definitely, because Arduino, this is our Arduino, sorry. This is Arduino, and you see the Arduino does not come with the, that port. This port, you cannot find it in the Arduino, the Ethernet port, so that you put the internet cable. Maybe you are connected to the local area network. Your internet is connected via wire, and you want the cable to be fixed to the, your Arduino. For your project, maybe to connect to the internet. So probably you are having a sensor or uh, somewhere, and this sensor may be speaking as I look at it, it's more of a temperature sensor. It is picking some temperature, and you want that temperature gets to the Arduino board. The board picks the, 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 the data, and then to push it to the internet, the internet is here indicated by the cloud here. So what do you do? How do you take the data from the, from the, from the temperature through the Arduino board to the internet? You will need an internet, an Arduino Ethernet shield or Wi-Fi. It comes Ethernet or Wi-Fi. It comes with Wi-Fi together. So this is, and even comes with, look, there's even a small space here for you to be able to put in a SIM card. You can even put your SIM card there so that you use the data bundle to still run your project. Using the data bundle, you're able to push this information on the, on the, on the cloud or rather into the internet and take them to probably a data storage service somewhere, or even have them presented in the computer, in your Excel or any other uh, uh, data visualization, uh, whatever software that you have. So it is important to know, know that um, a shield is very important when you want to do your project, you want to have probably another shield to add the cap capability of Arduino to be able to focus more on your project. And this is in response to the question that uh, somebody asked. Uh, what does it mean if you want to do a project, we have to buy a specific Arduino? Maybe not really. It's not important you buy a specific Arduino. You can just get the same Arduino, uh, but move ahead and try and get something else like the shield to extend the capability of that Arduino. I think maybe that is very clear, and you have now I've now shown you the uh, an example. So very quickly on other shields that exist, we may not be able to exhaust all of them. I think I, I think I'm just repeating the same thing. These are the, just the same thing that the shield can be Wi-Fi or Ethernet. We, the, the shields come in two. There is the Wi-Fi shield or the Ethernet shield. And remember the Ethernet because of the Ethernet cable. I'm just trying to explain more. On that, I think this is more elabor elabor elaborative. Then there's micro SD either to 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 carry the data, or even it can be a SIM card to be able to connect to the the various networks, the telephone network, telecommunication network, be it Safaricom or Airtel. You put it there, and you are able to push your data uh, online, or even to call somebody. So maybe it is about calling, and you need uh, this kind of shield. So. Maybe there's another shield towards that, which I'll be showing you. But in most cases, I think this is about micro SD. Definitely, it's about storing uh, storing data more than or photos. Probably you're putting a security uh, gadget somewhere, and you want those photos to be sent to your phone as it shows probably who is coming at the door. And then as they come at the door, the camera takes the photo, and then the photo is sent straight to your phone using uh, so definitely you'll need a place to store the photos. Maybe not sent to your phone. Maybe you'll come later in the evening. 
remove the SD, take to the computer, download the photos and see what really happened during the whole day. Uh, in most cases, remember, we have sad. So it is very important to understand that an Arduino board can be, can be extended, the capability can be extended if we, we add in some of these uh, shields. Now the shield come in many, many formats. There are these shields, you can see more. There's even probably a screen here, an LCD, uh, there's a screen. You maybe you are, so you need a screen and therefore you don't have the screen. In. And even connecting this screen to the Arduino can be a very, very, very uphill task. But if you have a shield that has already connected it, so you are just to connect direct, it is, it is a bit easier for you. And uh, I think you can see others already mounted like this one here. Uh, and then and this is a GPS shield. It's written even on, to, on the board. The GPS shield is just for location. Maybe you are doing something and you want it to show location. Probably you have put most of this Arduino in different location and they are mon monitoring animals in the forest, for example. So the one that really uh, monitors an animal is able to send the location uh, coordinates and you are able to know that that thing is happening in this particular location. So in order not to suffer so much, we have this shield, which is already, you can see it is plugged on top of the Arduino. Arduino is of course the one down and this on top, the one on top here is basically the, the Arduino, uh, the shield that is, is, is probably moving and taking to the next level. I think uh, more shields are here, you can see the touch screen shield. Probably your project has a touch screen a part of it, so you need the touch screen shield. There's the wave shield, uh, there is the data logging shield, and look at the way some of them really require a power source on their own, their own power source. So don't think that you're going to use the power from the Arduino to power some of these uh, shields, so they need the power source. But still, even with all these shields, you will still need an Arduino. Remember that these are just shields. They are extending the powers of Arduino to be able to come up with uh, with with your pro 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 project. Uh, XB shield, Ethernet shield. We have talked about Wi-Fi shield. I think we have talked about. There are quite a number, and it is important to know that you will need most of these shields in in different uh, work, and they are going to help you in your project. I think maybe I'll, I want to take a break and uh, during the break, I want you to ask questions, especially uh, based on what we've talked about. Then we'll go straight to the other modules that are found inside the kit. These are not necessarily shields, but they are just modules and components that are used uh, for, for Arduino. Three minutes uh, for questions and it will be good. If you don't have time to get question kindly, um, you will definitely type in the question and in our next session, I will be able to answer all the questions, even the ones that you've typed today. Now we are back and uh, we are talking about the, the modules that you'll be able to find. Uh, some of these modules, they come uh, in the kit, if you don't get them in the kit, probably you may be able to look for them in the stores or in the market where you can be able to buy them in the shops. Uh, the GPS module is here. The Bluetooth module, probably you want to run, uh, maybe you are, your project is about Bluetooth or maybe you want to use the location. You want to look at the sensor. These are mostly the temperature sensor and humidity. This one picks the temperature and humidity at the same time. How wet is the environment? The RFID uh, uh, module, probably for, uh, uh, in most cases, you're looking at uh, those entrance um, access and, and you need to get those modules, depending on your project. And we'll take you through all this uh, one by one as we move on. The sensors and the modules, we still continue. There's even the gas sensor and they come in various sense for the, what what project can you do with a gas sensor probably detecting fire when there is fire 
uh, and you want to really, you can put it so that it detects fire or smoke. Like we can say, uh, do not, uh, do not probably uh, smoke here. And then you put this, you'll find most cases where they say smoke should not be, uh, should not probably, uh, people should not smoke. So these sensors are put there to detect people who are smoking and it's able to report them. The temperature sensor we've talked about, and uh, of course the flex sensor is here. Then think about the fingerprint scanner. I think you have had such, such cases where you even register or go to school and you're told, put your fingers here. This scanner, all those projects were, were, were done and they're very cheap. I think the finger, finger, fingerprint scanner, I think should be costing roughly 200 shillings and stuff like that. So you just pick this and add it to your project. Then there's the counter. Uh, you can always use this, especially when people are passing, you can know how many people have passed and stuff like that. Think about other sensors and I'm adding more sensors here. Uh, like, uh, uh, I, I think maybe, yeah, the, I can recognize the, um, the other different, the photo, photo resistor is here, probably infrared is here. And then of course the force sensitive, if you want to deal with the uh, earthquake detectors, you want to come up with an earthquake detector, uh, probably you want to really reduce a uh, whole effect and stuff like that. Start thinking around the sensors. What your project, where will it be uh, taking you? And then more components that you can get. Remember, we are talking about uh, the Arduino kit. If you can remember, we are talking about the kit and these are some of the, the sensors. You need to look, uh, I mean, the components that you look out uh, in the kit. There is a relay. I think we've not talked about relay. Uh, maybe relay mostly is used in projects where you are switching. It's a switch driven by a small, used to control larger voltage. You can put it even to control power in the, in the house so that when you're away, it turns off the power. Or sometimes you see something like uh, you put uh, a light, uh, a movement, movement. Uh, we have movement sensor. You put it in the toilet. Because mostly on the dormitories, you find in the dormitories, the lights are only left or the classes are always left. And we always complain, who did not switch on the light, who did not switch off the light. So in such a case, you just put a movement sensor and you connect it to a relay so that when there's nobody totally in the room and people have moved out completely, then the lights are turned off automatically. So you don't have to blame anybody, not even the, school, the, the leader, the, 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 the student leader who is supposed to be in charge. Of, uh, of the classroom or the lighting and stuff like that. So think about all this, we will share and then you, you'll be able to know where do we, where, where do we come, come with. And these are the components, you'll be able to find them in the, in the, in the kit. Uh, more components, in the kit, we've talked about jumper wire, we've talked about potentiometer, LED. I think there's a lot we can probably practice here. There are more components, of course, Photo resistor, then I think all this we've talked about. The motor, yes, motor is for driving wheels or probably want to drive something across. You need the, the motor, uh, something like that. Think about um, those, I uh, think we've talked about all that. So all these ones come inside the components. They're the ones that come with the, with the, with the, with the Arduino kit. I will want to take five minutes to talk about the board. This is a very important uh, thing. And this is one of the components you'll find in the kit. The board comes in various sizes. There's a full board, then there is a half board, and then there's a very small quarter board. This one is usually very, they are all used in different, in all, they, they, they all do almost similar work. Of course, the, the, the full board, enables you to connect many components and you're able to uh, reach it how you need to be able to connect so many components from it and then we have the half board this one also connects to the to the to the various components and then we have this small other board so you may look at this and think maybe it's not a board for the first time when i looked at it i, I dismissed i said what is this 
uh, not knowing it was just uh, one of the bulbs that uh, are also they also come with the kit. Remember, there's one thing you have to also know about the full board. Some of the full boards they are not fully connected. You'll find it's a full board, but halfway. It's this this component here because we are expecting that in a board the whole of this should be able to be connected all through up to here, and this other section also should be connected all all the way to the other side. But you'll find that in a board, some of the boards this is not the case. They are full board, but they are not that connected. So you have to be careful of the kind of board you have in your kit when you receive the kit. Also, make sure those that these ones are connected. You'll find that this ones are this these are the sections written plus and minus. They are all connected all through. There's a continuous connection below it, or rather inside that connects this point to this point here. Okay. Then this also this other side also are also fully connected all through. But then these other ones in the middle here, they are only connected in this way. And I think we'll be able to sh to show you that in the next uh, in the next in the next uh, whatever. And you can see what I'm talking about. You can see here this connection is full all the way. I mean, it's straight. Sorry for the line. It's straight all the way. I may not be able to draw this given that I'm using the mouse, but you can see. And these other ones are connected like this. So if you connect something here and expect it to be connected with something you have connected here. Definitely you, you won't get it right because this and this are not connected at all and it's very important you know that. That connection is what makes it uh, possible. So some some of the boards will come when they are a bit transparent like this, but you'll find most of them or rather if you if you if you are able to break the board into pieces, you'll find this kind of connection inside there is like a small metal metallic thing or iron or, or, or a sheet. Uh, that is connecting inside just to show you that there is a connection inside probably more about the board is that uh, think this one now the lines are very straight i was able to to manage to to draw it and we call it solderless because you don't need to solder it to burn it remember I remember using soldering bits or soldering wires you are not supposed you don't need to burn it so that you are able to to get it working so you can just uh, Correct. Right. There are questions here, and I want to really, uh, really answer them briefly. Correct. So that we are able to to work with them. And I think that one in the last five minutes we'll be answering some of those questions there. Great. So vertical columns, you can see. They are, they are, you, you can see the, that kind of connection. So it's important when you have the board, the broad breadboard, you ensure that uh, uh, you ensure that uh, probably these connections, you don't lose the connection because there's always possibility that you can lose that connection and it can be very, very bad if you lose that connection. I think maybe that is that's the brief. And uh, maybe what else do you want to know about the breadboard? Then look at uh, the, probably look at the this breadboard. There is A, B, C, D, like that. So you are able to say, tell somebody kindly, connect on pin two B. Pin two B would be probably this pin over here, because you can see it's two B. Connect your wire, your jumper wire on pin two B or twelve E. Twelve E would be somewhere here. So ensure you're picking the 12 and the E. Uh, this one will help you to get this vertical. But remember the kind of connection that we are having. The yellow means a continuous connection. Where there's no yellow, uh, it's not really connected. So it is important. But again, I want to remind you that uh, in the full board, some of the boards, you may not be able to get, you may find it is connected halfway. So this yellow, you can put uh, you can fix a, a, a wire here, expecting it's connected to a wire here, only to find that they're not connected. So be careful when you are dealing with those full boards. Some of them are not, uh, especially the latest version that I'm seeing in the market, uh, are not connected at all at all. Okay. 
So I think that is very, <coughs> very important. Right. I think maybe probably the last bit would be to answer the question, but I think just talking about the solder, uh, more explanation about it. I think this one we've talked about. So remember, these ones are not connected at all. Ensure you are you are you are looking at this. These ones is there are no connection, and these ones are connected. So the green color I've used here to draw to tell you that these ones are connected, and these other ones are not connected. So take care when you're dealing with. Uh, that kind of uh, a thing. Great. Uh, let me ask. Let me take this opportunity uh, to answer these questions very quickly. Question number one, uh, probably uh, somebody is asking, and let me get it. That uh, uh, we have questions and questions indeed. So let me just. Let me just publish all of them. Wow. Okay, question number one. Kisi, second, I think Kisiri, what is the work of gas sensor? Gas sensor definitely is to be able to sense where there's gas. Probably you don't want gas leakages in the laboratory, you use it. Or uh, when we are talking about smoking, fire, fire extinguishers or automatic fire alarms, they are made of uh, gas sensor. You use the sensor to be able to to bring in uh, to be able to detect that then somebody asked about the flex sensor flex sensor uh, the flex sensor is mostly is of course as you can hear the word is flexible in most cases as as you move around it either it increases in rate or stuff like that so in most cases this one is used when you want to do projects probably around door as the door opens the wider it opens something happens so it is flexible sensor and mostly uh, you'll find it is used to in, in the door of or door sensors mostly uh, or probably even I've, I've seen it in most cases some of them put on animals and uh, you see if it is becoming a bit stiffer then you realize hey the animal is going to get choked so you try and loosen it so it is more more of just uh, being looking at what's the flexibility of whatever gadget you're dealing with. So I think maybe you can be able to find out by trying it out in your projects, uh, in the upcoming projects. The last question, uh, I think maybe that uh, I, I did not, how does the resistor work? Of course it reduces, resistor only reduces uh, the electricity or rather the, the voltage and enables and make sure so that the component by protecting the component from really uh, or maybe regulating the amount of uh, maybe voltage or power getting to the component. I'm trying to explain it in a very, very simple way uh, because I know the students, uh, the, the members are mixed. There are those who are taking physics, there are those who are not taking physics. But all in all, it is used to protect the gadgets from burning so that you only allow that appropriate uh, kind of power to get in. I think all those are the questions that were here, the rest are basically uh, comments. Uh, the rest are basically comments. Then probably let us say that tomorrow we'll be continuing from here. The next one we'll be talking more about uh, how to program. I think we'll now basically get settled and we get straight to programming. Uh, probably we'll be talking about how to connect those wires, how to get the different hardware together. And finally, probably we'll be talking generally, how do we start programming? I think, thank you so much uh, for today's session. Uh, I've loved it and I've enjoyed it as the way some of you have also enjoyed it. Thank you. And that will be the end of our session today. Thank you so much and God bless. <laughs>